The lease is up soon, so we're going to move out in three months. Definitely got to be carrying Debbie home tonight, which then I'm going to have to face her son saying, what have you done to my mom? So. Oh! It's going back to number one YouTube channel in the entire world. Today we're talking about Debbie because she is on the single life. MILF, 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 MILF. Mill. This is Debbie's Instagram, by the way. She posts a lot of pictures of what she used to look like back in the 80s. Bueller. I'm assuming what she's saying by this is you think I'm hot now, you should have seen me back in the 80s. I was an absolute smoke show. Debbie's currently living in Las Vegas and is 69 years old. Nice. Shut up, guys. In the past, Debbie latched on to her son and his relationships harder than Voldemort latched on to Harry when he made him a horcrux. <laughs> Lord of the Rings is better. Anyways, I'm excited to see Debbie get back out there in the dating world. It's very hard to do so, especially when she was in a long relationship with Colt's father and she took a lot of time to mourn the loss of her partner. So getting back out there shows a lot of courage. So snaps for her and I'm looking forward to this one more so than a lot of the other segments on The Single Life because I believe it's going to be really wholesome to watch. Colt and Vanessa are in a good place in their relationship. They're trying to start a family. So Colt expresses to his mother that he wants to move out on his own, which is great timing for Debbie because I do think that she's done a lot for her son and prioritizing his happiness, almost being too much of a caretaker. It's not that I don't want you be too much of a mother. I just don't want you to interfere so um, brazenly. Whereas now, I believe that she needs to go off on her own journey and find love. I think that it's funny that the roles are reversing. I'm curious to see if Colt is going to be a smother son, like Debbie was a smother mother or not. After getting on dating apps and trying all sorts of methods, Debbie has landed herself a blind date. As Debbie prepares for a date, she expresses her nerves because it is a blind date and there's a lot of uncertainty that goes along with blind dates, but she also recognizes what she brings to the table. What's the phrase again, Socks? With age comes experience. Definitely having a sexual relationship because you know by my age you really really good <laughs> You know a lot of things. Debbie's right. I'm not good at trigonometrics, but let's do some quick math socks. If you're sucking 12 dicks every single year and you're 69 years old now, and if you started slopping at age 18, that's a lot of dicks. But that pales in comparison to the amount of cock that Jeffrey's going to be catching in his throat in prison. We, the jury, find the defendant Jeffrey Ian Paschal guilty of domestic violence. He's cute. I've seen him my heart. How's that? You swipe right or swipe left if you like and you don't like. Debbie reminisces about the good old days before dating apps and the Onision variant of the virus. She says, back in my day, young whippersnappers, we used to have social clubs for dating. This is what Debbie looked like in the 60s. She's a total catch. Really got that grease lightning vibe. I like the poofy hair. You understand exactly how the dating apps work, but I have to keep trying because I have a huge sex drive now. Okay, the more you know, and this is the Learning Channel, right? We can see where Colt gets his sex drive from, because if you guys remember, Colt says that he has sex five times a day. He has a gnarly sex drive, and Vanessa even said that she's doing her best to keep up with his sex drive. Yeah. You want to have sex all around the house I mean, five I'm times a day, right but, a, now, yeah, but a lot of times Debbie comes in and it's awkward. I think Colt's sex drive is normal. Which guy wouldn't want to have sex five times a day? Now, that being said, it is kind of strange to be having sex around the house when your mom is also living there, it just seems like this tripod needs to break up. You need to leave! So it is the appropriate time for Colt to tell Debbie that, you know, you might want to leave the house, mom, because I'm trying to bang Vanessa all over the house and you're just kind of living here. Colt informs the audience that the house is small and he doesn't want to be around when his mom brings home dudes. Equally, he feels uncomfortable banging Vanessa while his mother is home. I'm proud of Colt's progress, honestly. He used to be a Chaz from the Wedding Crashers. My God, the meatloaf! But now it seems like Colt, he finally has his priorities straight and he's treating Vanessa like the queen she is. And he actually treats her way better than he treated Jess and Larissa. So I think that him and Vanessa are just the right match. I'm baffled. I actually agree with Colt here. I think that he's being very mature about the situation. It's crazy because his his relationship with Debbie went from they should be on that show, I love a mama's boy, to now we're starting to actually break up with Debbie for Vanessa. Debbie goes on to make it sound like these living conditions, living with her son and Vanessa can actually work for all of them because they have a policy if the beds are rocking, don't come and knock in. Debbie, look at me. You are not Colty's college roommate, okay? This shit does not fly. Some sons would put you in a home from the way you've acted. Colty, I think, would be willing to get you an apartment, but you might actually have your own money yourself to do that. I don't know your financial situation. All I know is that living together with your mother when your mother is going about going on dates with dudes and everything, bringing guys home, 
Look, if I was Colt, I would have the same concerns. Plus, now he has Vanessa to clean for him and cook for him. So, you know, what's your... No, I'm just kidding. Guys, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Next thing you know in a roundabout way, Colt, he goes about breaking up with his mother, Debbie. Well, we've been thinking about separating. Uh, me from you guys, right? Well, yes. Ever since Colt and Vanessa got married, I've been thinking about moving out. And I've even looked at a couple apartments. I'm taking my time to feel comfortable about where I want to move, and I'm probably procrastinating a little bit. Debbie's doing that thing that I'm sure everyone has experienced when you have a roommate. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm waiting to move out until I find the perfect place for me. But they're really procrastinating and stalling for time, and you're like, Hey man, you know, my girlfriend said she wants to move in, so you need to leave. Pulte tells Debbie that the lease is up in three months, so him and Vanessa are gonna move out in three months time. So he gives her notice. Three months is a long time notice. It's not like he gave her one month notice or one week notice. We're gonna move out in three months. Three months. Debbie did not take this news well at all. She says things like, well, way to lay this on me now. What a fucked up thing to tell me. Uh, I don't even feel well anymore. Even though I don't look at them half Italian. So in my family, we call this the Italian mother guilt trip. It's basically the way of acting where the elder of the family thinks that everyone is supposed to support them and do everything their way for the rest of their life because they gave birth to everybody. Larissa's words, Colty is becoming a baby boy now. Debbie's saying stuff like he's a rotten bastard. He's gonna dump me on the streets. Um, you know what? As a mother, you should want this. This is your child uh, moving forward with his life at the ripe age of 36 and actually doing right by his wife. Later in the episode, it is time for Debbie's blind date. Her date shows up to the house where he is greeted by Colt. Colt, he takes it upon himself to be a good son and greet Debbie's date at the side of the house by the fence. Hi. Hi. I'm Edward. Edward, I'm Colt. Nice, nice to meet you, Carl. Uh, yeah, my mother just be a second, so okay. wait for her. By the way, getting a look at this house, this is how every single home looks in Vegas with the exception of the custom neighborhoods. The real estate agent in me is screeching because right now it's the best time to sell your house in Las Vegas. There is an exodus from California and a bunch of other states. A lot of people are moving to Las Vegas right now. I think by Colt coming out to greet Debbie's date, he was trying to intimidate him a little bit. He said things like he worries about his mother, treat her right, and he's folding his arms, but he's so cuddly. He's like a cuddly bear cub. You know what I mean? He's not intimidated in any way, shape or form. Nice to meet you, Debbie. Nice to meet you. I hear a hint of an accent. Yes, I'm uh, originally from Manchester, England. Oh, all right. Oh, are you from Manchester? Are you all from Manchester? Sorry, I'm being annoyed. Love the UK, I used to live there for a couple months. Manchester's famous for the girls that put on way too much makeup, and you think that you're sleeping with an eight. Next thing you know, in the morning when the makeup's off, she's a four. Debbie thinks her date is awfully cute. Colty tells them to have fun and no funny business, kiddos. The roles have reversed because now it's him being the parent to his mom, so... That's fun. Anyway, I just got a tattoo, so it's like, okay, I never had a tattoo before. Do you have a tattoo? No, I'm not into tattoos. I'm not either, but I got this one. Okay. Well, do you want to see her tattoo? It seems to me like the date isn't really interested in Debbie, and I'm trying to figure out why. She seems very nice. She has a lot of sporadic energy. She's very talkative. It is revealed later that she feels very talkative when she's nervous. I don't think she's doing anything wrong so far on this date. I think that the guy seems very reserved, and he's not really asking questions. After a long pause, Debbie tells this guy that she has cats, and she says, do you want to see him? And he says, no. And I'm like, oop. Um, Awkward. She's throwing out big, I love lamp energy. I love lamp. And he seems like he could honestly care less. But from what we've seen on the show, a lot of the British guys that have gone on the show have been very monotone, really boring. So maybe he just needs a couple drinks to loosen up. As these young lovers arrive at the cocktail lounge, the producer asks the guy what he thinks about Debbie. And he says, to be honest, I thought she was much older in person than he expected. He goes on to say, but he's enjoying being with her. She has that ability to talk and he has an awkward smile when he's saying this. So I think he's already checked out of this state, which is kind of sad because they just got there. Drinks? Drinks. You drink? I do not. Really? I don't know. Oh great, you guys. First date at the cocktail lounge. Why would you go to a cocktail lounge on the first date if you don't drink? One. Two, how do you not drink and you're from Manchester? She found the one British dude that doesn't drink. How are you doing? Hi, can I get you something to drink? Something I would love a scorpion. It is get six shots, 64 ounces. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I love the balls on Debbie right now. He's not drinking. Well, I'm drinking because it's an awkward situation. I love this mindset. She got a drink with six shots. She's going to get absolutely blasted. I can't wait to see it. I hope she throws up on this dude's face. I don't like his aura and his vibe. He's got like a beater negative vibe and energy. Debbie's on fire. She's a firecracker. She's doing great. You're doing great, sweetie. And for 
area? I'm gonna go with a tonic water and lime, please. Sounds good to me. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Thank you. Tonic water and lime, eh, you fucking pussy. Homie's from the birthplace of spoons and he ordered a tonic water and lime. <laughs> Unbelievable. I hate your face. I am so upset about this. When she ordered the drink with the six shots in it, um, I thought I'm definitely gonna be carrying Debbie home tonight. Which then I'm gonna have to face her son saying, what have you done to my mom? So... That's right, Buster. You better treat Colt's mom right or else you're gonna get smacked down. Yeah, you're gonna get the beat down from Colt. I'm sure you were already intimidated by him. It's a very large drink. Yes. Thank you. Debbie got the most obnoxious drink in the place. She's having a blast. She's smiling. Next thing you know, the guy starts talking about a lot of sexual things on the date. What do you think about sex on the first date and a bunch of things like that? What is your opinion on sex on the first date? I don't know. I mean, I'm not against it. I, I'm not... Right, it <laughs> As she says, sheepishly looking at the floor. Going. I think what this British dude's trying to do is that he already knows this relationship with Debbie isn't going anywhere because he is kind of checked out already. He doesn't really like her that much. So I think he's trying to get a one night stand out of it. This British man that doesn't drink alcohol furthers his advances by assuring Debbie that he doesn't need to take pills to get hard in the pants. You know, there's little blue yeah. pills. There's some guys who are in their 40s who need little blue pills. But I'm a lucky that I don't need a little blue pill. <laughs> so I'm hoping to be having sex when I'm in my 80s. Now, when this actually doesn't work and he's dropping Debbie off, he tells Debbie that he wants to just be friends and they should stay in contact. And then Debbie's like, oh yeah, okay. And goes inside and starts crying and is really upset. And she just professes that it's very hard. She puts herself out there. She hasn't been in the dating world for a very long time, a number of years because she was loyal to her partner. And she actually mourned her husband for 13 years. I didn't know that. Debbie, don't cry, keep your head up. You're gonna find a great partner for you. It is not this guy, to be honest. Can I tell her? Yeah. The Wet Sox didn't like him anyway. He was very boring. He didn't drink. He was from Manchester. We were getting a lot of mixed signals the entire time. Love is out there for you. You gotta dust yourself off and you got to get back out there in the dating world because you got a lot to offer and also you got to leave the house in three months because Colt and Vanessa are trying to fuck and you're getting in the way. I'm going to be making a lot of update videos about Debbie's trials and tribulations on the single life season two because it is mad interesting and I'm invested. Guys, comment below what you think about this video. Subscribe. Let's be ready. Let's be ready. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.